Question for John. You, at the start of your presentation, you were showing your Twitter account, I think, and you said about the deliberations on whether you had your personal account or perhaps call it the corporate account. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose it's, it's as much a comment as a question about how much for businesses we hide behind the corporate account, and yet the whole thing with social media is to have that personal uh, sort of space that develops the trust that people are going to then actually engage with us. Yeah, so, so that, that was kind of my, my thinking and why I didn't create, you know, why I didn't create that second account. Um, and I think that we, so at IBM, we, we actually don't have very many corporate accounts, but some people kind of just only talk about um, work stuff on their, on their Twitter account. They, they put IBM at the end of their Twitter handle. Um, but the, the two reasons I didn't was A, the energy and effort required to maintain two accounts. And uh, I've seen too many people logged into the wrong account and posting something they shouldn't have posted, and it just seemed like too much effort. And actually, to know, get to know me as a whole person, um, has, a, has a better effect than sort of artificially creating this line uh, between work and personal. Um, and also I'm genuinely interested in what I do uh, as an individual. So if, if I see something interesting in the news about social, is that a work comment or is that a personal comment? I mean, it, it started not to make much sense. Um, actually, we as, as, a, as a company, we don't have many corporate accounts. Um, we started to do some. But we have 25,000 people on Twitter who identify themselves as IBMers um, unof you know, unofficially. So our, our, our view was that's a huge amount of manpower, but we're getting kind of for free. So why don't we take advantage of that rather than try and drive people to what will probably be a very dry and boring um, official IBM Twitter account. OK, next question. Yes, at the back, uh, very back. Thanks. Yeah. Um, again, to uh, the guy from IBM, uh, you were looking at kind of wiki-based platforms for document collaboration. Um, I run a social media consultancy here in Wales. We do a lot of that work with our clients. And what we find is that uh, very often the, the chief barriers to adoption are around the shifts in workflows and power relations. So obviously, if you're working on a wiki-based platform, uh, it, there is no longer a core document editor. There, it, it's simply who cares about this paragraph the most is going to get their formulation into the final document. Um, the other thing is that uh, using social platforms requires an, invest, an increase in trust within the organizations and those human behavioral uh, challenges are often the bigger challenges yeah. rather than uh, the technology itself, which is readily available on platforms like Google Drive, for example, or Trello as another example. Um, I wonder if you have anything to, kind of, to, to comment on that, that around the behavioral issues. Yeah, so, so first of all, on the, on the wiki side, it is. So what we're also um, looking at is kind of more of a halfway house. So we've got now platforms where you can kind of take a wiki document and assign ownership to different people. So it's still visible because everyone can see what you're doing. Um, but you say, so it's almost paragraph by paragraph, kind of highlight, right click, that's yours. Highlight, right click, that's mine. I can still comment on the side and say, hey, but I can't necessarily edit. So depending on where you are in your cultural shift, um, you might end up in a pure wiki environment, but that might be kind of a stepping stone to help you go along the way. I totally agree that it's more cultural than technical, especially with cloud-based services. You know, you 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 you, put your, you you sign up and switch one, and they're there. So the technology is not the not the issue; it's the cultural side of it. Um, and they kind of pull each other. So on on one hand, like on that A on our on our agenda there, you have to want to be aligned. You have to want to do this. So I I, I went and met with one bank who said, um, we want to be social, we want to flatten the organization, we want to empower our employees to do what they want to do. And I started talking through some of the, oh, we don't want to do that, because they'll be able to just do what they want to do. And I said, well, hang on a second, you just, you just said that you wanted to do this, right? So, but you can, you, they can pull each other up. So if you introduce a little bit of social technology, that might help pull the culture, you know, make the culture a bit more open. And as the culture gets more open, you introduce some more social technology, and they can 
pull each other up by the bootstraps rather than saying, we can't do any of this because our culture won't allow it, or we have to change our culture first, because I don't think you will totally change it if you still got antiquated collaboration, <laughs> <laughs> antiquated collaboration tools. Okay. Thank you. Uh, another question? I don't see any hands. I guess you're all hungry. <laughs> yeah. No? Last last chance. Oh sorry, there's one down here near the front. Last one, I promise you. Um, for John. Um, you've talked about your internet and how your people are collaborating and interacting. I'm wondering if you actually taking that idea out onto your channel's market and are you using LinkedIn groups for that sort of purpose? Yes, yeah, so we're, we're using a whole load of stuff. So we'll use LinkedIn groups. Our, our, our kind of like our telesales team, are, uh, you know, they, they use that a lot um, to create, you know, so thinking about when we're moving to Windows 8 as an example. So they will create a group and, you know, and it's kind of like the, 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 the English cut, the tailor, just trying to share expertise on how to move to Windows 8 rather than here's an IBM Windows 8 server that you're going to want to, want to buy. Um, so we're doing that, we're doing Twitter a lot, so we proactively look at Twitter for um, reputation. So if we see someone saying, um, wow, that IBM, I can never get hold of the right person, it's really difficult, it's annoying me. Um, and then to have a personal touch and someone reach out and say, hey, I saw that, I, can, I can't answer your question, but I, I might be able to help you find the person who can, is highly, highly effective. And then also our own technology, kind of like the customers that we had there, where it's more private, um, you know, if we're collaborating with a partner on a uh, joint proposal, um, we have our own, you know, the, from the customers that I showed, like the, the restaurants and those people, it's the same technology we would then use to collaborate with them uh, on, that front, on that front as well. So we use a range of, a range of stuff to do it. And likewise, at uh, major events, you've been collaborating with um, people who are setting up your events. Yeah. Is it all good yeah, so, so we do that and we, that's where that, kind of, that blur between inside and outside. So that template I showed you where we were planning our own internal event. So we might use that to plan what we want and then take the finished version and then ship that out and start talking with Ogilvy or our partner or someone else about how we're going to go forward as well. So we're seeing, you know, we're seeing where this is going is a big blurring between that line that says internal, external and the security and how we kind of say this is internal and we need to collaborate and we need to open up this little aperture for you to be able to work with us on this part of it, but still in a really social way and not have all the security and corporate security police come down on you and stop you being productive. Um, that's kind of the, that's where we're at in terms of where we're, where we're seeing the, the new innovations on this stuff. Thank you. Okay, thank, thanks very much. I uh, just want to leave you with one thought. Uh, you didn't direct a question to Antonio or to, to Paul, so and the thought involves them both, or they both inspired the thought. Uh, Paul talked about the quality of life, uh, where he lives and works up in North Wales, quite rightly, I think. Uh, and Antonio comes from Extra Madura, and he pointed out the objective one status for European funding. Uh, the thought relates to an experience I had, I think it was in 94, when I first went to Extra Madura down in sunny southwest of Spain. Um, and the minister responsible for technology was the Minister of Transport, actually, which was quite a normal thing in those days. Transport and communications seemed to take over technology. And he got up to open the meeting workshop, whatever it was, and he said, uh, I want you all to know that Extremadura is the third poorest region in Spain, uh, sorry, in Europe, uh, which is why we get Objective 1 European funding. Uh, and of course, the European Union measures these things on the basis of GNP per capita. Anyway, the minister went on to say, uh, we welcome all you people from all over Europe to, to our region. Uh, we want to work and collaborate with you. We want to adopt and exploit these new technologies. But, he said, but I will not tolerate anything that would diminish our quality of life. And the point, of course, is that poverty as measured in GDP terms, doesn't necessarily relate uh, to quality of life. So we should bear in mind that there are a lot of aspects about needs and the challenges we face, and 
what we want to achieve, that technology can help us achieve, and not allow the technology uh, to drive it the other way around. Okay, that's it uh, for this morning. I hope you've been stimulated and entertained and informed. A lot to talk about over lunch.